Hey everyone, Mixtape Ninja here. Uh, I apologize for the low quality. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to uh, do this in the dark and uh, I've messed around with my settings and I can't really seem to get a clear image, so my apologies for that. Anyways, today is not only going to be a review video, but I also have... If this is also an update video, I'm going to be talking about what I have planned for <laughs> later projects, I guess. That, that's probably the best way to put it. Anyways, so yes, this is the Temple for the Forsaken Emperor, uh, as you can definitely see, and I am not going to bother talking about all the other pointless information. I'm not going to tell you how many pieces it consists of, nor how many minifigures, nor how much it was. You can find that out in the store, or watch other people's reviews, okay? So, uh, let's, let's just get into this. Wait, okay, so before I start, I actually would like to tell a pointless story of when I tried to grab this thing off the shelf. So, I was just at Target, you know, I went over to the Lego aisle, and this family was just there, and there were just a bunch of kids there, well, they were probably about closer to my age range, but I'm not going to bother going into detail with that. Anyways, so they were, so these kids were just like looking at sets as I, as I just had my eyes on this one set, because they just barely got released in the US at the time, and so I'm just waiting there until the family leaves. But, people couldn't make up their minds about what they wanted out of the aisle. So I was just standing there for 15 minutes, just a 19 year old boy just standing there waiting to grab a $100 Lego set that's recommended for ages 8 to 14 I believe. So yeah, I'm just standing there awkwardly as they just couldn't make up their minds and then even more of their family mem members came into the aisle and just crowded up the aisle even more. And I'm just waiting to grab one particular set. That's all. And then... So, then they just decided not to get any sets, if I remember correctly. And then once they finally leave, I'm just like, ah, oh, finally. But of course, given how embarrassed I would have been to have just been carrying casually carrying a Ninjago set in the middle of the store. Of course, I didn't want to look silly to people. So, thankfully, I have a six-year-old brother who actually also loves Lego sets, so I let him carry it. I'm just like, here, you can carry this out the store. Anyways, that's my story. Okay, now let's get to the review and then I'll talk about what I have planned next for the future of this channel. Okay. So as you can see right here, it just uh, looks like an ordinary uh, Japanese castle, except modified to look cool for fantasy reasons. I'm completely okay with that though. I'm, ma I'm mainly just uh, in it for the theme, you know? I'm always in it for the samurai, knowing me, as many of you guys already know. Um, yeah, right here is just a Lloyd's Spinner, which I'm not really a fan of. Just for the sake of nostalgia, though, that's just me. Of course, I can definitely see why many people like it better, so don't you worry. I, I have a brain, guys. I have a brain. Anyways, back here you can see the Shogun's Throne. For those of you who don't know what a Shogun is, uh, just uh, look it up. But uh, I'm just a one who is very familiar with studying the history of the feudal history of Japan. Right back there is the throne. Uh, in all reality, Shogun didn't have a throne like that. They technically did have a throne, but it was more their own style. It was nothing like a king's throne like that. But it's Ninjago, it's fantasy, so it's completely okay. Anyways, now to the minifigures. So right, ah geez. 
Right here we have General Vex. I believe his name is, yeah, General Vex. He is looking nice and shoddy. Um, I, okay, so... I really do dig this look. I mean, like, the crest, like, okay, so... Like, you can definitely tell, just looking at the details, they absolutely based this all off of the look of actual authentic samurai armor. Like, of course, it's not entirely authentic, given that it's got ice elements, but the fact that it's actually meant to resemble that is good enough for me. <laughs> then, uh, anyways, here we've got Lloyd. Uh, I don't know what FS stands for. I, for I completely forgot. Um, also I have to hold it at this distance because I cannot focus with all with one hand. Okay, I'm doing this with the camera in one hand. Anyways, of course, Lloyd being my least favorite character, I do dig the design of this cowl. I really do think they should have uh, made one of these without the flames. But that's okay, I still really love the look. Um, just given that it's Lloyd, I just hate Lloyd. <laughs> but also, the one thing that's always pissed me off is that the fact that they decided to put... Okay, the creator, the people, I don't know what was running through the heads of the people who were making the Ninjago movie and developing the designs and all that, but this is disgraceful, like... This is just a blend of two cultures that don't even like each other. Like, what were you guys thinking? Putting a kung fu sword in a ninja theme? Like, okay, whoever thought this was a good idea really needs to be fired. Okay, they should have gotten fired from the project. But, what, but whatever, whatever, it's Ninjago. It's nothing to be surprised about. All right, anyways, mo moving on. Yes, yes, we got the Ice Shogun. Many people like to uh, spoil or theorize that it's Zane. I, uh, my feelings beg to differ. But that's just my feelings though, I don't know for sure. But uh, yes, I do, uh, as all, of course, I do dig this design because, as I've said before with General Vex, you know, I just couldn't resist the very samurai resemblance. They're, they're also very satisfying to touch, like, I love feeling the textures, like, the textures are, like, very therapeutic. I can basically use these things as a stress ball if I wanted to. Uh, he's also got a nice uh, Naginata right here, which is the name of, uh, it's, it's the name of the one weapon that samurai would most commonly carry out onto the battlefield. And, uh, yeah, but I do think these things are awesome. And I really do, and, you know, just knowing me, I like to spit random facts about feudal Japan every time I do reviews on Ninjago sets. And I like to correct some flaws that they get wrong sometimes. Like with Kabuki for some, like, yeah, with Kabuki, for example. Alright, moving on, I knocked... Cole over. But anyways, yeah, he's looking nice and fly, as you can see. Um, yeah, you're probably wondering, what happened to his hammer? Well, here's the thing, I modified it to a scythe, because whoever thought it was a good idea to give Cole a hammer also needs to get fired, just like the guy, or whoever it was, may it be he or she, who came up with the idea of putting a broadsword in, they need to get fired. Okay, that end of story, okay? Hammer, like, yeah, like, I get it, you know, like, hammers can be cool, I can see why people like it, but it's just very unfitting, even in fantasy, okay? Even in fan, even when it's a ninja fantasy, it's, it's just, it's dumb, okay? I, I hate war hammers with a passion. So I modified it and made it into an awesome scythe. 
Okay, anyways, here we got, um, I forgot his name, but I dig the, ah, oh, jeez. Ah! Anyways, yes, of course, I dig his design as well. I absolutely love it. Here, ah, uh, let me, let me just focus. Fo ah. Okay, whatever, whatever, I'm just gonna put him down and, uh, sorry guys, the video cut off for a second, but anyways, yes, of course, I dig this design for obvious reasons, because, uh, also, uh, sorry, you probably heard my tripod falling over, but... Come on, you you cannot you. There's no way you can uh, ever underestimate the dual blades. You know, du dual wielding is always an awesome element to put in fantasy. Okay, when it comes to fantasy, there's nothing more awesome than dual blades. Okay, dual blades are my weapon of choice. <laughs> then uh, here's this uh, here. <laughs> here's Oh my gosh. Sorry guys. Yeah, I'm doing all the like I said, like everything's on manual mode right now. But anyways, yeah, here's uh this uh poorly designed ice samurai figure. Like this was see it's it's not even hard to tell that this was a very, very lazy design. And uh yeah, it's it's disappointing. But whatever, we've got the two awesome ones right there, so it's safe. You know, if, if these guys weren't in the set, then I probably would have, like, rethought my life decisions. Like, yeah. Without him, him, or him, I, w I wouldn't have bought this set. Uh, or I would have got the set just for the... Just for the set obviously, and Akita, which is by far one of my favorite minifigures of all time. Um, yeah, okay, so the one thing I, the one reason I love this minifigure so much is that it reminds me of my favorite Studio Ghibli movie called Princess Mononoke, and for those of you so-called Studio Ghibli fans who haven't even seen that movie yet, you are a waste of space, okay? Like what like what are you doing with your life? Like go watch it right now. I urge you to. Um yeah, anyways. And uh then there's uh this uh needless crossbow thingy. And of course, we've got a we've got a thick boy dragon right here. He is a thick boy. You see, uh, this set was so big that I couldn't even fit it entirely in front of my background. But yeah, this is me doing the best I can to make a somewhat quality video, I guess you can say. Even though there's a lot of fuzz on my camera because of how dark it is and... I've adjusted the aperture, I've adjusted the ISO, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a being a tool. I've even messed with the shutter speed too. The shutter speed didn't even bother assisting either. But anyways, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna bother wasting time going through the articulation, because I'm, I'm pretty sure many other people who have reviewed this set have already gone through that for you, so if you're wanting to see that, then go to someone else's review. <laughs> yes, I am a D-bag. I NEVER SAID I WAS NICE! Anyways. Before I go, I would like to talk about, like, what I have coming up next. So, of course, Shadow of the Vicious Episode 3 will indeed be coming soon. Like, I promise you guys, it will not be another nine month long wait. Like, you had to, like, the gap, just like the gap between Episode 1 and 2. I promise I will not make you guys wait that long again, okay? That was nearly a year of waiting. I cannot, I'm not gonna live long enough for, I don't know, maybe I will, but 
Mm. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta keep up my pace, okay? I'll keep up my pace just for you guys. Anyways, so yeah, but my plans for, so yeah, I. Let, so for now on, I do plan to continue uh, working on Shadow of the Vicious until it is complete, okay? And, uh... So yeah, I, pro I promise to do that, and then afterwards I plan to actually start a, a Ninjago series, actually, called Die for Honor. And, uh, and then later... Uh, but yeah, um, after, after I finish, well no, well, so, soon enough I actually plan to make, uh, little demo clips for Die for Honor, and then, yeah, and then I will finish up Shadow of the Vicious, and then I will start on Die for Honor. Uh, I will not explain any of the details because I don't want to, uh, say any spoilers. Um, I also do, uh, have a historical event stop motion coming up in October, which will be about Musashi Miyamoto, but that's about all I will say about it. But, um... <laughs> After Die for Honor, I plan to end off my channel with a Ninjago live action. And yeah, as silly as it sounds, I can 100% absolutely guarantee you that it will not be a cheesy, like one of those cheesy Power Rangers concept type live actions, no, like, I actually, like, am wanting to put a budget on this and make something good for you guys, like, if I tend to disappoint a single person in my audience, unless it's, like, I don't know, someone I absolutely hate, then I will absolutely just end my own career and then I will be living off minimum wage. Like, I am actually willing to sacrifice for this live action. I don't know exactly what I will sacrifice, but yeah, I like want to make it good. And, you know, like, pe the people and, uh, you know, just to uh, get an idea of where I pick up inspirations for that is just to uh, look up Team Red Pro Productions. They are what inspired me to actually come up with the idea for it. I will link their channel in the description below. They have to be my favorite YouTubers of all time, especially after watching Afro Samurai Shampoo. Like, I've been watching their channel since, like, my, like, my sub count was higher than theirs when I first saw theirs, and then they skyrocketed right after, right after they uploaded the Afro vs. Mugen fight scene. But anyways, yeah, that's about all, to, all I have to say. I haven't started writing the concepts for the live action yet, because, you know, I still haven't even written anything for uh, Die for Honor yet, because I'm going to be focused on Shadow of the Vicious. But yeah, and uh, hoping you guys will not be disappointed. And uh, yeah, uh, that's all I have to say for today. Uh, Ganbaru.